Well, 15 minutes of fame on the subject of loneliness. Firstly, I haven't done a 15 minutes of fame video for a while. And the idea behind it is I talk for 15 minutes and my timer ends at 15 minutes and then I stop. This time I'm going to talk about three things. I'm going to talk about Christmas Day and loneliness. I'm going to talk about loneliness and me and how it's affected my life. Then I'm going to talk about something which I'm hoping is going to be rather wonderful, but it might not. The positive effects of loneliness. I know. I didn't even know there was such a thing until I had a conversation with uh, somebody uh, a few weeks ago. So my timer is set for 4 minutes 45 and each time it beeps I then change the subject. Now <clears throat> you may not even be watching this video or may not have wanted to watch this video because I'm talking about loneliness. Who wants to talk about loneliness? Nobody wants to talk about loneliness. Nobody wants to admit to being lonely. Not many people. And Oh yeah, loneliness, that's what old people get, isn't it? Or loneliness, that's what happens when you're on your own. But loneliness affects everybody. It affects everybody. Even if it doesn't affect you, you're probably doing an awful lot in your life to make sure that you're not lonely. It affects you. It means it's just driving your behaviour. It's making you do things that you wouldn't do be in a relationship that you don't want to be in, be in a job that you don't want to be in, <sighs> spend time with people you don't care for, all to avoid the feeling of loneliness. So Christmas Day, <clears throat> I was going to record this video on Christmas Day, which I spent on my own. I've spent Christmas Day on my own a few times. Strangely, this year, I told several people I was spending Christmas Day on my own and I got invitations to go to Sweden, to, um, to uh, a place near where I live, to uh, the Cotswolds. It was lovely. And I, I, op I opened up to people saying I'm spending it on my own and I'm looking forward to spending it on my own. And they offered I had op options and I, I still chose to spend it on my own. <clears throat> I've spent Christmas Day on my own a few times. <clears throat> and I'm talking about Christmas Day and loneliness because I think it's probably the day of the whole year. That and maybe Valentine's Day, maybe even Mother's Day. But I think Christmas Day is the day when people feel most lonely. But if they spend it on their own. I've spent Christmas Day on my own a few times because I don't have family, because I don't like reaching out sometimes to siblings, because I'm not in relationships sometimes. I, might, I usually spend uh, Christmas Day with my girlfriend, so if I don't have a girlfriend. Sometimes I've enjoyed it spending most of the day on my own and then a few hours with somebody. There's been once I really did not like it. I really didn't like spending it on my own and you put the radio on or the TV. I would have a TV but you put the TV on and it's all about how everyone's spending Christmas and how everybody's having a good time. And, and lots of people are having a good time. Lots of people are. And even people that are having a good time or spending it with lots of other people, they could still be feeling lonely. It isn't, loneliness is not something that means being on your own. It, it, there's something that has, has a different quality. You feel isolated. Either no people or no contact, no connection. This Christmas, I went to Scarborough. Gosh. And I... I had an okay time. It was okay. It was all right. I chose it. It was okay. I, I'm going to include a photograph of me 
um, at Scarborough on Christmas Day. So I, I can't say any more about Christmas Day other than, because my time is up, other than it, it's the time when loneliness is felt most. And it's the time when we do anything not to be lonely. So we will spend Christmas Day with people that we don't want to, because we do rather that than be on our own. I, I, you know, I don't like loneliness more than you, or you know, I don't particularly care for it. I've in the past I have done lots of things to not be lonely. But I've been lonely a lot. I used to, when I was year, really young, I used to go out on my own. I used to go to nightclubs on my own. Um, you know, I, you'd go to a bar and it was busy so you could kind of blend in and not look like you're on your own. And w when I come to the end of this, the third part of this video, loneliness isn't a bad thing. But I thought it was. So I felt shamed by going out on my own, not having any friends to go out with. But I've done it, I did it. And in, in my twenties especially, I had relationships with women that I liked, but not probably enough to have a relationship with because I wanted not to be lonely. Now, I didn't know I was doing it, but on reflection, I was in a relationship because I didn't want to be lonely. I had companionship, or somebody to talk to, someone to connect with. So these are not good relationships. They don't work out very well. But it's, just, you know, it's where I was. I, the last few years I've spent an awful lot of time on my own. I work for myself. Um, I, I have got a web business where I make money from advertising on my websites. And I'm just starting a transformative coaching practice. And that has, especially the training, I was talking to people, clients, in person or on Skype. So the last couple of years I've been more with people. But I, I, I had a business where the, the websites made money. I had no clients. I had websites. I didn't need to see anybody. I didn't have customers. I didn't need any contact. I had very little contact with anybody. And the last couple of years, I haven't really enjoyed this, but the last couple of years, I seeped myself in it. I, I deliberately was with myself, to be with myself, to be okay with myself. And I, I tried not to do anything to sort of um, mitigate, I guess is a word that comes to me, mitigate that, that feeling, so, to make it go away. Now, I did internet dating for a while, and that kind of gives you a sense of not being lonely. Um, but I, I tried to not do that too much. So I spent time on my own, and I didn't... I, I, I stopped going to clubs. I stopped, I stopped some of my hobbies. I stopped going to Toastmasters. I stopped going to the gym. I didn't stop it on purpose. I just didn't want to go, and I didn't want to go not to be lonely. I didn't want to do anything not to be lonely. Do you understand? I didn't want that to be the reason. And I got okay with myself, reasonably okay. And particularly with the inside out understanding of the human experience that I've been exposed to for the last couple of years via Michael Neal and several other Three Principles t t teachers, I've really got okay with being with myself. I, 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 see, I see loneliness as being a time to share me with myself. And not always, but there's a gift. It's, oh, I get to be with me. And, I know, and now, I, can, I know that some people will be listening to this. They're so busy, so busy, so busy, that they would love to spend some me time, some time on their own. I, I know that the grass is greener, and it looks like my life is fantastic. It's time. But seriously? One of the reasons that you're so, so, so busy is because you don't like being with yourself on your own. So, I'm, 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 I have an understanding of loneliness. 
I can talk about it. It's influenced my life in a negative way. I'm now okay being with myself. But I had a conversation with um, the Supercoach Academy graduate, Marina. Hello, Marina. She's from Mexico. And it was one of the most beautiful conversations I've had in my whole life. And I'm going to paraphrase what it is about. And I, maybe I can't even tell you properly what it's about. But basically, Marina was curious about my loneliness and my distaste for it, my, un, my not liking it. She was curious about that. And she said, don't you like being lonely? And it wasn't this quality solitude time she was talking about. It was actually being lonely. The feeling of loneliness. Don't you like that, Steve? And I said, well, no, of course I don't. Nobody likes that. It's not to be liked. And our conversation was effectively about the idea that loneliness is a feeling and it doesn't have to be disliked. It could be embraced. And then there was this lovely conversation about what you notice when you're lonely. You could spend 10 minutes looking at the clouds moving across the window or a drip going down the window or you could eat an apple it's really slowly because you've got nothing to do and you're not distracting yourself and there's no you're on your own and you're lonely and you're really feeling it you're just in this moment and it just lasts forever because you don't really want it to be like this and you bite an apple and you you taste everything so much more deeply and so there's this concept of of in the company of yourself, in the company of yourself, not alone, not lonely, in the company of yourself and the extra awareness you had of life. And, and maybe I'm not giving you the essence of, of this conversation very well, but it was, as I said, one of the most lovely conversations I've had in my whole life because it was basically talking about something that I shunned and was ashamed to even admit that I suffered from. I was talking about something that I thought was bad. Loneliness. Bad. Fact. And I could see that it wasn't. I could see it might f not feel nice. There may could be many meanings we could give to loneliness. Not having any friends, what does that mean? Or not having friends with you right now, what does that mean? Or you spend too much time on your own, what does that mean about you? All these meanings made up. The feeling of being lonely, of lonely, okay. I might not like that feeling. But I could grow to like it, I could grow to be in it, I could feel it and go, oh. Ooh, the lonely feeling, ooh, hello. And so now I spend quite a bit of time on my own, still. But I've, it feels a really strong thing to be able to do, to be with yourself and to not need to react outwards and get a friend, um, do a Facebook status up, update, uh, do internet dating, uh, send a text message, uh, get a hit for, of attention. I don't need to do that as much as I used to do. And it's just, I can be with myself. It's a gift to be with myself. Now, I could do with spending more time with other people. Yes, I could. But I'm not afraid of loneliness like I used to be. I'm welcoming it now. And my 15 minutes is up. I'm welcome. Loneliness. I welcome that feeling. And I'm recording this video on a day when I have absolutely nothing to do. What shall I do? I could, I could create clients. I could update my website. I could go for a walk. I don't have lots of money, so it's not like I'm a millionaire idling my time. I could do lots of things to make this t fact that I haven't got anything to do with myself. I could go away. 
but I'm just going to be with it. I've decided to record these, this video. It occurred to me to do so. But loneliness isn't driving me like it used to. I welcome it. I welcome talking about it. There's nobody that hasn't felt lonely. Alive now, there isn't. And most of us are ashamed of it, but there's no need to be. Just be with yourself. And I'm not going to tell you what to do. This is just my 50 minutes of fame on loneliness. I have to stop now. But really, thank you very much for watching. If you managed to get all the way to the end, I salute you. Um, thank you. But please tell me what occurs to you to what's occurred to you whilst you've been watching. Okay? Thank you for watching this video. My name is Stephen Nash.